Where should you go on safari? Eastern Africa or Southern Africa? If you're wondering what the differences are between these two regions, you're in the right place because I'm gonna be breaking down the differences in today's video. You ready? Let's do it. Hello everyone, it's Jeff here, your favorite safari addict, and in today's video I'm going to be sharing the differences between Eastern and Southern Africa. If you're new to this channel and haven't met me before, my name is Jeff Heyer. I am obsessed with safariing and going on wildlife expeditions all around the world is my life. I've had the pleasure of traveling extensively across the continent of Africa, all the way from Morocco and Egypt through East Africa to the southern point of South Africa, the Cape of Good Hope. So through these many experiences, I've learned a lot about the differences between what it's like to travel to these places, and that's what I wanna share in today's video. So a little bit of background on myself, I am a social media nature series host. I share videos on TikTok, Instagram, where I talk about natural phenomenon, wildlife, and eco experiences. And on this channel, I dedicate this platform to sharing adventure vlogs from all around the world. We go find mountain gorillas in Uganda, we find wolves in Yellowstone National Park. There are endless adventures here, and occasionally I share videos like this one, where I share travel insights and answer the big questions that get asked to me about my travels. And on top of all that, I work with a luxury travel advisor who plans itineraries all around the world, and I help her with the safari planning. So if you need help planning your dream safari trip and need someone help book it for you, I can help you with that. If you want me to get involved with your trip, the details are below for more information. But this video is all about the differences between East and Southern Africa. I've spent a lot of time in these two regions. In South Africa, I lived on a wildlife research base for an entire summer in the greater Kruger area, which was spectacular. And I've been lucky enough to have gone to East Africa several times over the years. When I was in high school, I did a study abroad exchange program in Nairobi, which sparked this whole safari adventure to begin with. And I've been able to go back repeatedly over the years. So through these travel experiences, I've gained a really strong understanding of the differences between these two regions because they are very different. So a lot of you are watching this video because you're starting to plan your first ever safari experience and you're not really sure where to go. Where are you going to pick as your focus destination? Because deciding on where to go on safari is a big decision and I wanna help you make that choice for yourself. So before I start, I just wanna be clear on what I mean by Eastern and Southern Africa. So in East Africa, I'm referring mainly to Uganda, Rwanda, Kenya, and Tanzania. And in South Africa, I'm talking about Zimbabwe, Zambia, Botswana, and South Africa. But to be even more specific, what I really mean is South Africa versus Kenya and Tanzania. These are the three most popular safari destinations on the continent and the places you're most likely considering to go to on your first trip. So I really wanna be specific when comparing these things because even within East Africa and South Africa, these countries vary from each other and also those are the places I've spent the most of my time. With that said, let's get into it, let's break it down. So the first major difference between these two places is the environment, the climate, the weather, what kind of ecosystem that it supports, that sort of thing. So East Africa is predominantly a grassland habitat. This is where you're going to find sprawling savannas as far as the eye can see. The word Serengeti literally translates to endless plains and when you experience this place, you'll understand why it's called that. This is where you're going to get open vistas and see large amounts of animals speckled across the horizon. If you're picturing those nature documentaries where you see huge herds traveling across the savannas and crossing rivers, this is where those types of things take place. Meanwhile, in South Africa, it's a much more of a woodland bushland habitat. It's a thicker vegetation, it's a little bit more challenging to spot wildlife, and it's a different climate altogether. East Africa has a lot more of a constant weather pattern throughout the year. There is a wet and dry season, but what I mean by that is that because you're located right on the equator, the time that the sun rises and sets doesn't change a lot throughout the year. In Southern Africa, meanwhile, you're going to get shorter days during the winter and long Long, hot days during the summer. Because East Africa is much more grassland habitat, it's a lot easier to find wildlife. And this brings me to my next point, which is the overall game drive experience. In East Africa, you're gonna most likely be in these covered vehicles and you're gonna have one single guide and driver. 
Because you don't have to work as hard to find the wildlife in places like the Masai Mara and Serengeti, you kind of just drive out there and you're almost guaranteed a spectacular sighting of some kind. I will say you get pretty spoiled with the sightings in places like I mentioned. It's here you're gonna find the sheer numbers, huge herds as far as the eye can see. This is where natural events take place such as the great wildebeest migration where millions of wildebeest and zebra cross from Tanzania into Kenya every single year to feed on fresh pastures. So I'd say overall the game viewing is a lot easier and a lot better in Eastern Africa. In South Africa on the other hand, in this thick bushland and woodland habitats, it's a little bit harder to track down wildlife. So this is why in your game driving experience, you're likely going to have two characters involved. You're going to have your driver and guide, and then you're also gonna have a tracker who sits on the front seat of the vehicle, who's up there looking for spore or animal tracks that'll lead you to animals like leopards, lions, and cheetahs. Now, because it's a little bit more challenging and you're not always guaranteed a sighting, you get a lot more involved in the hunting experience. You're going to be an essential pair of eyes that needs to stay on the lookout, and it's very fun to immerse yourself in this type of way with the guide and the tracker. This also makes wildlife sightings even more rewarding and also very exclusive because if you do find a leopard, let's say, you're likely to be the only vehicle on the scene. This isn't always the case if you're not the first one to have found it, but if you are, then you get to enjoy that sighting all to yourself. Another thing I wanna mention is that on wildlife game drives, you're waking up very early in both destinations, but in South Africa, you get an even earlier start. You really need to get out early. Whereas in East Africa, you typically start around sunrise. South Africa being a little bit colder in those mornings, you really wanna bundle up. East Africa is gonna be cold as well, but it's not as cold as seeing your own breath. At least that's what it's like in my experience anyway. In South Africa, you really wanna make sure you're packing those layers. In East Africa, meanwhile, you don't need to pack as much. Now, a quick note on different species you'll find where, most notably the big five, because those are the animals people really wanna see on safari. In South Africa, you're a lot more likely to spot rhinos. South Africa is home to the largest population of rhinos on the continent, whereas in Kenya and Tanzania, they are very hard and rare to find. I have been lucky enough to see wild rhinos in Kenya and Tanzania, but they are a lot harder to spot. It is very lucky to find them. Another animal you're more likely to spot in the southern regions of Africa would be the leopard. They're a bit more habituated, used to vehicles seeing them, so they don't shy away as much from people viewing them, Whereas in East Africa, they're very skittish, very shy. If you do spot one, it's gonna be a pretty quick sighting. This isn't always the case, but most people who have been to both of these regions would agree on this. And then there's animals like the elephants. Of course, you're gonna find elephants in both of these places, but there are a lot more in Southern Africa. Botswana, in fact, is home to more African elephants than any other country on the continent. So if your big emphasis is all about elephants, you might wanna consider going there more. The next thing I want to mention is accessibility. So in Southern Africa, there's a lot more infrastructure. A lot more roads are going to be paved. It's a little bit easier to get around. In fact, if you wanted to rent your own car, it wouldn't be as difficult as doing so in East Africa. In places such as Kruger National Park, which is the most popular safari destination in the country, you can actually drive yourself. You can drive in the same way you would in a national park here in the US or Canada. You don't need to go in with a registered guide. On the flip side, in East Africa, you definitely need to go with a registered certified safari driver. You can't go into these wildlife parks yourself. So this makes it a little bit less accessible overall. Next thing I'm gonna go over is accommodation styles. Both of these places have everything from basic to moderate to ultra luxury experiences, but the overall feel and aesthetic of the accommodations in these two regions are different. In East Africa, there are a lot more mobile tent style places, open air canvases. Because the weather, like I said earlier, is a lot more constant, you can sleep in these canvas tents without the weather changing drastically on you. And these camping experiences are very nice, but they feel a lot different than the ones in Southern Africa. So Southern Africa, you're gonna find a lot more of the safari lodge experience. They're a little bit more homey. You're more likely to be staying in an actual room. And because there's no open air effect, you're able to get things like air conditioning. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is culture. The cultures are very different in these places. In East Africa, of course, you have the Maasai community. There's going to be Maasai elements integrated somewhere in your safari experience, whether it's in your accommodations, or you might even have a Maasai guide. And it is very popular for people to make stops to visit these Maasai communities as well. So if you're looking for more of a cultural experience, you might wanna consider that. In South Africa, meanwhile, the community is a little bit more international. You're likely to have a South African guide, but they could also be Dutch or French or American. What I have found in my experience in Eastern Africa, 100% of the guides have been local, whereas in South Africa, they're a little bit more international. 
Another perspective I want to bring into this are the differences in your overall trip itinerary. In South Africa, it's a lot easier to get a more diversified experience, a well-rounded trip that isn't just all about wildlife and nature parks. For example, a lot of people make a pit stop in Cape Town at the beginning or end of their itineraries, which is a wonderful city to experience. It's there you can go visit beaches or experience water sports, climb mountains, take the gondola to Table Mountain. You can also visit a lot of the historical points, botanical gardens, cage diving with sharks, or visit penguins at Boulder Beach. And of course, wineries, you can do a whole wine tour, you can drive around the Cape of Good Hope. There's a lot to do there. Meanwhile, in East Africa, your trip is gonna be a lot more focused on the wildlife and game viewing. You are not limited to that by any means, but that's typically how those trips are structured. Now you can visit beaches like Zanzibar or Lamu in Kenya. You could also hike Kilimanjaro, or you could even visit the rainforest regions in Uganda and Rwanda to go trekking to find mount gorillas or chimpanzees. There's other ways to diversify your trip, but overall in South Africa, it's a lot easier to include a lot in a short period of time. Whereas in East Africa, to tack on those places and experiences I mentioned, you're gonna need a lot more time. You're gonna need to expand your trip because you can't really hike Kilimanjaro in a day. And so you really need a little bit more time to make sure you have the full experience in these places. So that's a big thing to consider is the overall trip experience. So the last thing I'm gonna talk about are the similarities between these places. Because although there are differences I mentioned in this video, both of these regions and destinations are going to offer you a spectacular wildlife and nature experience. There is nothing quite like going on safari in any capacity, and it is truly a magical life-changing experience. There's an abundance of wildlife, so many natural wonders to discover, incredible hospitality experiences, and that is something you can achieve in both locations. So that is a very general breakdown of the differences between these places. I hope this video helped offer you some insight and a better understanding of what to expect when traveling to either of these places. If you found this video helpful and want to discover more ways to optimize your safari and wildlife experiences, don't forget to hit subscribe. And again, if you need someone to help plan your dream safari itinerary, I can help you with that. The details are down below. Don't hesitate to reach out to me. I'd love to help design a trip for you. Thank you so much for watching. Safe travels.